Hello there. In this video, we're going to talk about acid-base chemistry, uh, their theories, and some, some calculations in the next video. Okay, let's talk about the theories. So first, we want to look at water, because all acid-base story is in the water and at 25 degrees normally. That's where we do everything, right? So the water can be drawn this way. There's two lone pairs on the oxygen and uh, and bonding pairs so hydrogen gets delta plus and oxygen gets delta minus due to the electron negativity of oxygen so this delta plus is a smaller or partial charge on the hydrogen and delta negative on the oxygen so therefore oxygen steals the pair of electron the bonding pair and h plus is isolated and oh OH gets extra electron and that makes hydroxide negative and H plus positive, right? So hydroxide ions are existing really in the water, but the protons never exist. And also H with the two electrons, which is called the hydrides, never exist. So these are not real. These are only can be existing in the cyclotrons in the Swiss tunnel and that's the only place you can make a proton, right? So that's a little bit about nuclear physics. Anyway, so we go to the protons. Protons actually cannot be alone, so they will stick into the water, and it will make this one. This one is called water molecule and a proton. is called the hydronium. So the hydronium, U means plus, right? And is equal to, numerically equal to H plus. That's the important thing for easy calculation of pH, right? So it's 3O plus is identical to H plus numerically. Okay, and hydroxide. When you have hydroxide, it's a base. H plus is an acid. And if you have equal amount, it's neutral. Now, so let's take two water molecules. There are millions of water molecules, right? Uh, this two water molecules can this one can attack on the proton and break that bond because hydrogen can have only one terminal bond and because hydrogen is a duet so it'll make one bond and then by doing that you're going to make actual hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion that's the real thing existing in the waters how much so it exists in one in ten million right I need one more zero. Okay, yes. Uh, so one in 10 million. So uh, what's that? That means one times 10 to the minus seven because one over 10 million, right? Because every 10 million water molecules have one hydronium ion. And every 10 million water molecules have one hydroxide ion. But that means water is neutral. Water won't test acid equal basic, right? Now, uh, because there is H plus and OH minus, we call it KW. That's the constant of for the water. How much? 1 times 10 to the minus 7 times uh, t both of them multiplied. We'll get 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So these are fancy big numbers. Very difficult to deal with, right? So luckily, we got people working on it few hundreds of years ago, and they come up with the exponential. You take the minus log value, voila you end up with the 14 so take the minus log stop the video and take the minus log of 10 to the minus 14 you will get 14 because we are lazy the chemists are lazy and we're going to do that way it's easy so ph pkw poh that's why we use that okay now let's focus on this ph business so the ph means minus log of the h plus and the h plus are really really 10 to the minus 7 kind of numbers hard to deal with it so we take the minus log using the calculator. So you take it, you get 7 here. So now look at this one, 7.00, two decimals. And here, for the power, you have one decimal. That's the rule. If your course, your prof is talking about that, make sure the power is one decimal, the pH value is two decimals. That's the correct way to get the marks. Okay, some professors don't care about it. So depending on the, listen to your prof, right? Okay. So let's look at this one. This is the pH scale. We all know that 0 to 7 to 14 and in the middle 5 and 10, right? So that's a pH scale. But 
this pH scales could be 14 is basic, and 7 is neutral, 0 is acidic, and let's say strong acidic 0, strong basic 14, weak base uh, 10, and weak acid 5, right? Why we call acid? Because like I said, if you have protons, it's acidic. So here is a lot of protons. That's why it's strong acid, zero. Here's a little bit of less protons. That's why it's weak acid, right? Here, neutral, some acids, right? Some protons. And look at even a strong base has a trace of base uh, protons, right? Now look at this one. Why this is a strong base? Because a lot of OH minus. And then little OH minus, little amount is a weak base. And look at the neutral. Equal amounts of protons and hydroxide ions. That's why it's neutral, right? So this should, uh, this picture should show you nicely the link between the H plus and OH minus equilibrium, right? Now, so here, HBr, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, HClO4, those are the only acids in the universe. So HCl breaks down to H plus and Cl minus 100%. So if you have one molar HCl, you will get one molar H plus. So that's called the full dissociations. So that's why they are strong acids, they are strong electrolytes. So no need to calculate Ka stuff because it's 100% dissociation. We know what it is, right? Full dissociation, fully ionized very nice so not much of mathy problems look at the other side koh sodium hydroxide things like first column and second column hydroxides they're strong bases again no need to calculate 100 percent dissociation and uh, voila if you have five molar you have five molar hydroxides right no big deal so strong bases and strong acids are easier to memorize and if you take get calcium hydroxide, break it to calcium 2 plus 2 OH minus, right? And X molar calcium hydroxide will give you two X molar hydroxides, right? And this is also strong basis, like I said. It's a strong electrolytes, strong basis. Now, so the weak acids, neutral and weak base. So the neutrals ones are sodium chloride, water, blood, things like that. They will have KW, right? I mean, water has KW. So weak bases have a Kb constant of B, weak acids have a constant of A. So we're going to be doing product over reactants for those and calculations for those two, the, uh, Ka and Kb. So the Ka, uh, the Wa, weak acids, is HA, H plus, and A minus. Because of the H plus, you can write a Ka product over reactants. This is how we write it. You can do an ice table later, right? So the same thing, so the Ka is for the weak acids, and the Kb, uh, let's look at this one, BOH, weak base, B plus and OH minus, because of the OH minus, we write a Kb, product over reactants, and you have a Kb. So again, we can do ice tables on this one. So the ice tables comes for weak bases and weak acids. And those are the calculations, right? The two ends, not much of a calculation, right? You're going to be doing only um, stoichiometric stuff. Now, remember this way. So strong acids, uh, weak acids has a Ka, and uh, ne um, neutral salts have different calculations separately, and weak bases have a Kb, and strong bases just direct calculations, right? So that's how the complexity of this acid base unit's going to go, right? Let's, let's look at some theories we should know. So the first theory is actually Arrhenius. He's the one first started labeling these aqueous solutions as acids and bases. So if the aqueous solution releases protons, the H plus, in the water, that's called the acid or Arrhenius acid. That's HCl gives you H plus in the water aqueous. That's why it's Arrhenius acid. And what's the Arrhenius base? We'll be releasing a... OH minus, something like sodium hydroxide will break into sodium plus and OH minus. In this case, chloride minus and the sodium plus is useless. They are spectator ions, okay? Now, the OH minus is in the aqueous solution, right? And the H plus also aqueous solution, right? So that's how the Arrhenius 
um, acids and bases. Now when it comes to ammonia, we'll pick up a proton from here because of the nitrogen's electronegativity and hydrogen breaks the because it's dwarf, right? And ammonium plus and the OH minus makes. So ammonium plus and hydroxide ions because of the ammonia reacts with water. So Arrhenius could not explain this. So what happens now? Right? So there are a bunch of other scientists, chemists, right? They explain this way. So ammonia cannot explain by Arrhenius theory, but these two guys, uh, Bronsted and Lowry, they explained this way. So what's that? We call the BL theory. The BL theory is actually explaining anything can donate a proton or accept a proton. So let's see, look at these two. Let's label here. Yes, so proton donor, which is the water in this case, is the BL acid, and proton acceptor ammonia is the BL base. Okay, that's the way we want to do it. So that's the new theory, and we can explain a lot of things without um, without aqueous H plus and OH minus sometimes, right? Okay, the last theory is not much you're going to deal with it. It's called the Lewis theory, and that is means, let's take ammonia. There's a pair of electrons completely giving into aluminum chloride. Why? Aluminum chloride has only six pairs of, um, three pairs of electrons, six electrons, and it's electron deficient, so it's poor. So it's going to steal the both pairs from nitrogen, and that's called the dative bond. So you're learning one thing, dative bonds also here. And ammonia is donating both electrons, the pair of electron donor, that's called the Lewis base. And alu aluminum chloride is accepting the pair of electrons and it's called the Lewis acid. Or I call simply, it's the LA, Lewis acid, is an acceptor. Kind of like any singer or actor, uh, you get popular, you will be accepted to LA, right? To, to perform, so in the Broadway whatever right okay let's look at um, conjugate pairs so that's another term we should talk about so HCN and water and can um, dissociate and go back and forth equilibrium with H3O plus and CN minus in this case water is actually the base and HCN is the acid because HCN gives up the proton, right? So the water becomes H3O plus and HCN becomes CN minus, right? So now we can label them. So this is the acid, this is the base before the reaction. After the reaction, this becomes the conjugate acid, right? This one becomes conjugate acid because it's coming from the base, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's actually conjugate acid. And uh, this one, acid, will, yes. So H3O plus is the conjugate acid, and the HCN acid will give you the CN minus conjugate base. So each is a pair. So acid with, the, look at this one, HCN with the CN, conjugate base, acid base pair, right? Acid is HCN, CN minus is the C base, conjugate base. Water is the base and H3O plus is the conjugate acid actually, right? So, yes, base and the conjugate acid. Okay, so that's how the pairs work. What's the difference between the pairs? Is one proton. So we can kind of draw it this way. And that's also, I can talk about the ampoterics, right? Ampoterics means it like amphibians. If you're a biology student, you know they can live in the land and they're the the water so that means proton can be given and taken look at here plus or minus protein plus or minus proton right now uh, yes the water is ampoteric why Prot water can lose a proton and get a proton so that's why it's amp amp amphiprotic or ampoteric amphiprotic and ampoteric the same thing and i would think of amphibians right now each pair, so the H3O plus to water is a conjugate pair. All right, thank you.